Welcome back chat, this is Crazy Guy 21 The borders are opening at 1pm Or 1am on Saturday, just listen to this um, for clean time. Evening, our border wall is coming down. From 1am on Saturday, there will be no requirements for domestic travellers entering our state from anywhere in the country. And while mm. case numbers were down today, authorities remain on high alert as we recorded our deadliest day in the pandemic so far. Not even a mask could conceal the elation on the police commissioner's face today. I was trying not to reveal the smile, but... In March 2020, the first of what would be many border checkpoints was established. And for almost two years, the wall would be taken down, only to be erected again months later. But now it's official. Come 1am Saturday morning, Queensland's wall is no more. Look, it's a big decision, but it's a decision that's needed as we reached the peak of this Omicron wave. Once described by the Premier as our first it's line of defence against the virus, COVID's the border wall worse. has separated families, closed businesses and isolated Queensland from the rest of the country. But it also allowed Queenslanders to keep their freedoms. We had the advice of the Chief Health Officer and Queenslanders know we always take on that advice. The decision to scrap the border rules came early. The government's original plan to keep the wall up until we reached the 90% double dose milestone. That was part of our roadmap, but now at the moment the need is for our domestic borders to be open. The border operation has been enormous and the statistics are staggering. Since March 2020, 3.3 million border passes have been issued. Police checked 3.68 million vehicles, turning tens of thousands back. Officers intercepted 1.8 million passengers flying into the state, of which 64,000 were forced into quarantine. No, I can't take the smile off my face, but a sincere thank you to all of those officers out there. As of 1am Saturday morning, the following major changes will come into effect. No more need for a border pass. You will not need to be COVID tested to enter the state. Border communities can return back to normal life and the unvaccinated can cross state lines. The state's daily numbers were down today, 14,941. They were 22,069 yesterday. But sadly, today marks the deadliest day in Queensland's COVID history. Six deaths recorded overnight. Two aged in their 70s. Three were in their 80s and one in their 90s. Can I please express my deepest sympathies to the families of the loved ones? There have been no changes to international arrivals. Those passengers will still need to enter into quarantine when they arrive here into Queensland. Paul, it will stay that way until the state reaches that 90% double-dose vaccine milestone. The government still anticipates will reach it by about the 21st or 22nd of January. Now, the Premier was very stern today when she was asked about the unvaccinated. Sure, they will be allowed to enter Queensland come 1am on Saturday morning, but Paul, the Premier, was very clear when she said that the unvaccinated will not share the same luxuries of those that are immunised. Paul? Yeah, Peter, I'm sure, though, there are a lot of people smiling about that border news. Thank you for that, including those on the border. And Mackenzie Collahan is there for us tonight. Mackenzie, uh, a long couple of years for those border communities. Paul, I can tell you the champagne is on ice down here at Coolangatta. A border closures and travel restrictions have arguably been the biggest imposition on people's day-to-day -day life here in Queensland during the pandemic, and nowhere has that frustration been felt more acutely than right here in this community. Families who live just a few streets apart have been separated. Hours sitting in traffic has been added to the morning commute. These residents and business owners have essentially taken one for the team to keep Queensland safe, and the Premier finally acknowledged that sacrifice today. A 660 days it's been since these checkpoints were first installed. In just two days time they'll be gone for good and Paul I think I speak for everyone here in Coolangatta when I say I hope we never see them again. Thank you for that. Well, millions of Australians will have access to free rapid antigen tests within a fortnight. National Cabinet met for crisis talks today, also agreeing to change isolation rules for workers in critical industries. Truck drivers have hit a COVID roadblock. Shortage of pallets, shortage of drivers, 
Um, I don't think you can throw in too much more at the uh, transport industry to really kill us off. So today, National Cabinet delivered a lifeline. To further ease the pressure on supply chains, we extended uh, the easing of restrictions for close contacts. The next in line for a rule change, all transport, freight, logistics and service station employees. They will be able to go straight back to work if they're close contacts, provided they have no symptoms and test negative for COVID. The same will apply to... Emergency services, which includes law enforcement, correctional services, energy, resources and water and waste management, um, food, beverage and other critical goods supplies. Telecommunications and media are also on the list, along with childcare centres, which have been struggling for staff. We feel really uh, physically and mentally exhausted. And those who work in education. Schools open means hospitals are open. It means aged care facilities are open. It means essential services and groceries are on the shelves. Medical experts say it's safe for kids to go back to school, even if they're not fully vaccinated. Children are incredibly responsive to vaccine. One dose gives very high level of protection. The Prime Minister says the measures are aimed at striking a balance between keeping Australians at work and out of hospital. The idea that our measures as governments across the country, is to prevent everyone in the country from uh, being infected with the virus. That is not the objective. Some argue the government's objective should have been to order enough rapid tests to go around. The number one thing that Scott Morrison could do if he wants people to go back to work is to fix this absolute debacle of rapid testing. Businesses have been calling for free tests for workers. I don't have $4,000 to spend on rat tests a week. Nothing is free. All that happens is you just pay for it on your tax later on. So if you want something to be free, you're fooling yourself. Concession card holders will soon get free access to rapid antigen tests. They can collect them from pharmacies from January 24, with a limit of 10 in three months. That is, if pharmacies have the supply. Fiona Willen, Nine News. Queenslanders are being warned to brace for supermarket shelves to be running thin for at least another month before supply chains can be fully restored. But amid the stress and frustration, local producers are stepping up to the challenge, helping keep local pantries from running dry. These disappointing scenes in almost every supermarket. How is everyone going to cope? Yeah. You know what I mean? It's really sad. Two years into the pandemic and it's never looked so bad. I've got eight children of my own. You know, and then my daughter-in-law. I'm just asking where the Prime Minister is. Because I've, I've been in Australia for, for, for ages. I never see anything like this. Look at this two chicken for $40. Went in there to shop for five different items. Take a note of it. It's putting charities under increasing pressure. Lighthouse Care at Logan Home provides food below retail price to tens of thousands of families every year. Since Christmas, demand for home deliveries has doubled. People that are unwell and calling out, don't come near the house, just leave it at the door. And, and you know, there's just the desperation and the panic and the fear that's in our community is really sad. Officials are warning the shortages could last for weeks still due to the strain on supply chains. It's a national issue. And as we know, the, the, the prediction is that it's going to be a short, sharp wave. But local family stores are stepping up while the big chains are suffering. Smaller retailers say they're not suffering as much because their supply chains are a lot shorter. You're talking straight to the abattoir? A hundred percent. We've got a shorter, we've got a better control over the product. We can put an order in today and get it tomorrow. Suburban grocery stores like Charlie's Fruit Market in Everton Park are working around the clock to keep shelves stocked and food on customers' tables. Our buyer, he's a very passionate man. He starts his day usually around 3am and probably doesn't leave here till around 5pm most days. Family businesses stepping up to the challenge when they're needed the most. Josh Babis, Nine News. All right, so that was... Um the border open at 1am on Saturday for Queensland so you guys can enter Queensland without border pass or anything like that um so yeah like and subscribe peace out crazy guy 21's out of here